हेलो व्यूवर्स वेलकम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द चैप्टर सेवन फ्रीडम मोमेंट इन इंडिया रिटन बाय सुधीर चंद्रा सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ब्रिटिश केम टू इंडिया एज ट्रेडर्स विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम हाउ एवर दे डेवलप्ड पॉलिटिकल एम्बिशंस फॉलोइंग द डिक्लाइन एंड डाउनफॉल ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर ड्यूरिंग द एटीन सेंचुरी दे बिगैन टू वर्क through the wars and diplomacy for the establishment of their political supremacy in the country this turned out to be a gradual and prolonged process so it uh, took them long to occupy india beginning with the british occupation of bengal in the mid 18th century it was completed nearly a century later with the annexation of punjab so it took almost a century to capture punjab and they captured bengal at first after the war of plassey even as the british were carving out their empire in india stray and isolated attempts were being made to challenge this authority and their authority so it in the it is not that uh, indians were accepting british without any grudge or without any uh, struggle they were uh, making attempts to challenge their authority time and again <coughs> the climax came in 1857 when different sections of the indian society combined in large part of northern and central india in bid to overthrow the british often described as the first war of indian independence this was the last determined attempt made by the traditional feudal elements to regain their lost power so uh, there were kings and there were nawab they were also trying to find their uh, power and regain their lost power by this 1857 revolt it was completely crushed by 1858 so british crushed this moment and uh, the crushing was complete until 1858 this marked the end of the, a significant phase in history of north modern india and beginning of another the phase that began was characterized by the emergence of national consciousness and the consequent development of the indian freedom movement so now indians became conscious of their freedom and their identity that they belong to india and their country is uh, their mother like that this was made possible by variety of factors which combined to demonstrate the essentially exploitative character of foreign imperial rule increasingly indians began to see that there was a fundamental conflict between indians and british interest so now indians were uh, started uh, realizing that there is a uh, much conflict between interest of indian and britishers they saw uh, again and again that in this uh, conflict of national and imperial interest that is interest of british Uh, national interest were brazenly uh, sacrificed in order to benefit britishers and the irony of situation was that in the midst of uh, this uninterrupted exploitation british kept assuring indians that their welfare was primary objectives of british rule in india indeed so in this uh, condition britishers was uh, assuring indians that they are they have not come to this country to loot they have just come to educate them and they are working for the welfare of indians they would leave the country when the indians people indian people were fit for self government so in this way they were making fake promises with the growth of national consciousness in the year following 1857 politically conscious indians began to feel the need for a organization that could safeguard national interests and um, uh, obtain consciousness uh, from the rulers so now indians were uh, feeling that uh, they need some institution some organization which can safeguard the national interest
interest of uh, their people it was not any easy task so it was not easy to make a organization in their own country see the irony initially political associations were founded in bombay calcutta madras and pune so earlier there were small small institutions which were formed in bombay and calcutta and madras but uh, these remained largely regional in their appeal and operations but these uh, these organizations were not working at the national level and their appeal were uh, regional and at their operations and their uh, benefits and their uh, work was also regional there were occasions though when united action on an all india basis were attempted was attempted and uh, one such occasion was provided by civil service agitation under the aegis of the indian association which was uh, which has held in calcutta so there was a association uh, held in calcutta and uh, uh, due to that um, the indian national congress was formed the dream of having a national organization was finally realized in 1885 so in the 1885 congress was formed officially largely through the efforts made by a o hume a retired civil servant so a o hume was a retired civil servant and he made many efforts to form the uh, indian national congress this is picture of a o hume The Indian National Congress held its first session in Bombay under the presidentship of uh, W C Banerjee. So, first president of uh, Indian National Congress was W C Banerjee. Uh, this question is often asked in your exam. So, now this lesson is very important for your competition exams also. So, watch it carefully. Watch it till the end. Though only eighty-five delegates attended the first Congress. the foundation of national movement was truly laid on this occasion so this uh, uh, meeting was not attended by many people only 85 attended this but this meeting was very very important and occasion was very very important in the year that followed uh, the indians national congress went from strength to strength and provided a platform on which could gather together people who were committed to welfare and freedom of their country in its early years however the congress was committed to objectives of freedom only as a distance reality so it is said that in the earlier years congress was not pining for the freedom of country they were just content for the means that reforms in the Uh, administrative sector and political sector this is known as the moderate phase of the congress which lasted from 1885 to 1905 moderate phase the emphasis during this period was on political and uh, administrative reforms so uh, through these reforms india would be gradually trained for self government so they were getting training uh, from um, that administration that uh, how they will uh, work if they will get freedom only after long years of such training would india become fit for freedom and the british would leave the country so this was thinking of congressmen when that uh, would uh, happen could not be foreseen but they were not sure when they will get freedom from britishers all together for the time being therefore indians needed to bring their grievances to the notice of britishers so this was the platform through which they can appeal they can put forward their grievances their problems this could be done only on on the one hand by petitioning the authorities in india and england so this way was done by petitions on the other hand british public opinion needed to be won over in favor of india by means of propaganda and on the other hand this association this organization was also uh, very very important for britishers also the reforms that the congress asked for during the 
moderate phase centered around two basic aim issues representative government and indianization of administrations so two major demands of congress was representative government they wanted more and more representation in government and they wanted uh, indianization of administration they wanted many indian people in administrative services also it was argued that even with the best of intentions the british being foreigners could not understand the feelings and need of indians the way their own representatives and officials could right from its first session therefore the congress started demanding that indians must have the right to send their elected representative to the supreme and supreme and provincial legislative councils so they wanted more and more representation of indian people of course during its early years the congress demanded only a small measure of representation but with the passage of time more and more representation began to be demanded dissatisfaction however was growing with the slow pace of political activity there emerged leaders like lok manya bal gangadhar tilak who asserted that something more than constitutional agitation was required so now uh, in the picture more and more people are coming like bal gangadhar tilak and uh, they had uh, and, the, and he had a very revolutionary ideas and uh, he was uh, sure that uh, it just uh, uh, congress was not doing proper work this is a uh, picture of bal gangadhar tilak what needed to be done according to them was for the indian people in general to be politically awakened so they wanted that our people will be conscious our people should be aware and they should be politically awakened a handful of english educated persons alone would achieve nothing so according to them congress uh, is consisted of uh, highly educated english people and they are just not enough that uh, they are doing things our people should also be aware and do something for the uh, welfare of our country in increasingly large numbers the ordinary men and women of the country had to stand up together to demand their rights self reliance more than faith in their rulers was what indians needed so indians should be self reliant and they have to they have faith in their rulers they should have faith they should have faith in their leaders Uh, reaching out to the masses tilak spoke to them in stirring patriotic tone so bal ganga tilak was a leader of masses he was a leader of people he uh, he addressed people and he stirred uh, feeling of patriotism in them freedom he knew could not be realized by his generation so according to him freedom is a uh means very very hard thing to achieve at that time at least they could not achieve that freedom in that generation but that was no reason to lay greater stress on more immediate issues so he announces to his people and also to his rulers swaraj is my birth right and i shall have it so this was his slogan Tilak of course was not alone in trying to enlarge the base of freedom movement by appealing to ordinary men and women so uh, tilak was not just one leader there were many leaders who were working in this area around the same time for example arbindo ghosh started preaching the message of passive resistance so um, that arbindo ghosh was also uh, trying hard and he was uh, Uh, teaching people to be resistant so so did others like bipin chandra paul and lala lajpat rai and these uh, leaders also uh, did so many works in this area bipin chandra paul and together they are called uh, lal bal pal see the picture here lala lajpat rai uh, lal and bal gangadhar tilak and bipin chandra paul lal bal pal nationalism now tended to become a kind of religion so nationalism was not just a feeling now it was a religion 
and the cultures uh, cultural symbols began to be employed india no longer remained just a country it became mother bharat mata vande matram began to acquire the status of nationalist mantra so now vande matram who has become uh, has got the status of national mantra nationalist mantra tilak started organizing the ganpati and shivaji festivals to popularize the message of nationalism so in this way what happens uh, tilak started uh, uh, organizing many many festivals like ganpati festival and shivaji festivals and uh, due to this uh, organization uh, organizing this festivals uh, nationalism and people started uh, connecting to their roots connecting to their religion and connecting to their identity people with such ideas extremist as they were called these people were called extremist could not be satisfied with the moderate leadership of indian national congress so earlier in congress leadership there were dada bhai naro ji gopal krishna gokhale they were called moder- moderate leadership and uh, this extremist people this revolutionary people leaders were not satisfied with uh, this moderate phase of uh congress some of them like arbindo moved out to try the path of violent revolutions or uh, revolutionary terrorism to bring about the end of british rule so in this uh, way uh, arbindo ghosh tried hard and his path was violent resolution also revolution also to achieve freedom but many more remained within the congress and started challenging the moderate leadership but many uh, people were uh, still uh, remained in that congress and then remaining in that uh, organization they challenged this moderate leadership and their thinking and their way of doing things the extremists got their chance when the province of bengal was partitioned by kurjan in 1905 by means of uh, this partition the eastern district of bengal were taken out to form the new province of east bengal so in this way britishers divided east bengal from the west bengal the majority of population in east bengal consisted of muslim this was seen as a move to separate bengali hindu from bengali muslim in order that the rising power of the indian nationalist movement might be weakened so in that bengal nationalist movement was very very high and josh was very high so in order to curb that nationalist movement and its uh, rising uh, that britishers divided bengal politically bengal was perhaps the most advanced region in the country and if we can hear the nationalist movement in other parts too would be adversely affected so that was the idea of um, britishers consequently there was a spate of protest against this partition nationalist politics was a fire so uh, now indians were started realizing that uh, what uh, britishers wanted britishers wanted to separate uh, hindu and muslim and so there was a large scale uh, protest with feeling running high it was hardly possible for the moderates to curb the extremists so now in congress there was uh, that uh, the revolutionaries that extremists were getting hold at its banaras session held within month of partition of bengal the congress adopted three resolutions that were calculated to take it away from the courses of constitutional agitation on the path of passive resistance now what happens uh, due to the influence of these uh, revolutionary and extremist people congress also started uh, doing some resistance and doing some uh, hard uh, hard talk to that uh, britishers the three resolutions related to swadeshi boycott and national education so there was resolution was passed and that included swadeshi that they should include um, uh, swadeshi items they should use swadeshi items um, indigenous items 
and uh, they should by court that foreign elements and foreign uh, things and national education they should promote more and more to national education for the time being however not much uh, could be done by ways of implementing this resolution the moderate virtually threw extremists out of the congress in 1907 now in 1907 what happens uh, this moderate people overthrew this extremist people out of congress before the latter could plan a suitable course of action so extremists could not do any planning and they were not able to do anything then what happens the government came down upon them so government just uh, came upon them and the revolutionaries uh, with a heavy hand tilak was jailed for 6 years uh, from 1808 to 14 arbindo was put on trial for his role in organizing revolutionary violence Lala Lajpat Rai who had been harassed for a while in 1907 decided to leave the country India the extremists uh, were in complete disarray so in this way this britishers tried to curb uh, revolutionary ideas and they started crushing this extremist people this uh, revolutionary leaders along with this repression british also adopted a policy of reform this was done in keeping with their strategy of divide and rule so you know this uh, policy of divide and rule by announcing the scheme of morley mentor reforms in 1909 they won over the moderate at a time when they were crushing the extremists and revolutionaries under the same scheme they also introduced a separate electorate for muslims so under the scheme of this marle minto reforms what this britishers did they introduced and they formed separate electorate for muslims in this way they try to divide indian muslim from indian hindus this was a stroke this was a master stroke by which hindu muslim differences were to be exploited and sharpened until the last day of british raj so this was master uh, stroke from the part of uh, britishers and they knew that there is a differences between hindu and muslim and so they started exploiting this differences and uh, they did it until the british raj last day of british raj and finally they divided our country meanwhile in the wake of the partition of bengal the all indian muslim league had been founded in dhaka remember it is not in india it was founded in dhaka in 1906 to act as a illusively muslim political organization perhaps uh, with uh, encouragement from the authorities a delegation of muslim had called on minto the viceroy and asked for separate represent representation for their community so some delegate from that uh, muslim league uh, went to uh, viceroy and they met minto viceroy and they discussed that they wanted a separate representation of their community and they want more and more representation of their community there was lull during the years following the marle minto reforms uh, then the first world war uh, between 1900 it held it was um, first war, world war was uh, broke between 1914 to 18 broke out india was a stir once again so there was a uh, still turmoil in india during this uh, second first world war british asked indians for help in the war efforts on the ground that britain and her allies were fighting this war to save democracy so in this way they again started fooling indians that they are fighting the war of democracy they are uh, fighting for democracy and they want uh, f- um, help of indians the indian responses naturally was that india too must have something of democracy in that case so now uh, indian did, uh, demanded from british uh, that if you are uh, marching ahead in the path of democracy you must give us uh, some concession why you are you uh, trying to o- over crush uh, crush us 
तिलक एंड मिसेस एनी बेसेंट स्टार्टेड देयर सेपरेट होम रूल लीग विच वर्क इन क्लोज कॉपरेशन Uh, to demand self rule for the country so uh, that uh, any basent and uh, bal gangadhar tilak formed home rule league and they started doing uh, works in the in the path of self rule for india in view of the need for unity at this juncture congress accepted uh, back the extremist at this lucknow session 1919 uh, 1916 so now congress realized that this is the time for unity so they uh, take uh, takes back that um, extremist to the party and uh, this was done in the lucknow session what was more important congress and muslim league reached an understanding known as the lucknow pact uh, of 1916 to put forward a united front against the british now hindu muslim also invited muslim league and congress also united to uh, fight against uh, british means in this way they were supporting british in uh, first world war but they were uh, still uh, uniting here so that they can uh, deal with any untoward situation the revolutionary is also become the the revolutionary also become active at this period realizing that um that the situation was grave this was a very very grave situation serious situation secretary of state for india montagu uh, assured indians that they could expect a new measures of reform after the war was over so uh, montagu started fooling indian people that if they support uh, britishers in that uh, first world war they will have a lot of uh, reforms in their country during the war the government of india had acquired emergency power but uh, when the war was over it decided to retain some of these powers on ground that revolutionaries were still active so they were not ready britishers was not ready to shed their powers and they were still retaining many many powers acquired during emergency period of first world war this was done by passing the rollet act so rollet act was passed rollet act or this is also called black act as the, they are called caused a widespread resentment in the country and it caused lot of anger in country alter after the war for democracy had been won dictatorial uh, laws has been imposed upon indian so this is irony of the situation that uh, britishers won the war of democracy and they started crushing indian people and they started uh, autocratic government so much for their loyalty and help during the war so this was a gift from britishers uh, british side to indians soon uh, following a call given by mahatma gandhi the country was in grip of satyagraha against the roll attack so now they, there is emergence of a great leader in this time mahatma gandhi he started satyagraha against uh, uh, roll attack coming back to 1919 the country responded enthusiastically to gandhi's call against the roll attack so now gandhi ji started uh, fighting against this uh, black act law rollet act and they and he invited uh, all people to uh, for his uh, for their assistance here barring stray act of violence people remained non violent and he appealed to people that you must uh, struggle against british government but you must be uh, non violent in any case not so the rulers in amritsar when um, thousands of men and women had assembled peacefully at the jallianwala bag a virtually massacre was ordered by general dyer but this appeal was not taken in a good way by that uh, britishers and what happens here uh, to uh, to protest against that uh, rollet act peaceful people were gathered in that jallianwala bag and there was a order for uh, massacre by general dyer and this uh, that wall was very high so people were not able to escape some people just jumped into this well this uh, this well is called now shahidi well 
and when it was found later on there were thousands of dead bodies were found in this well this was a great and very large massacre very very painful incident the whole country was shocked gandhi was convinced that british rule was satanic now gandhi is also started realizing that this british rule was satanic about the same time as part of the peace settlement after the war the turkish empire was dismembered so there was a empire of turk who was not um, membered by britishers they were not regarding him uh, ahead so this caused resentment this ca caused anger among indian muslim because for the majority of them turkish sultan was their khalifa and they were regarding uh, that turkish sultan khalifa and their chief leader so they were angry with britishers finally when the reforms promised by montagu came uh, this were this were known as montagu chemsford reforms indian found them inadequate unsatisfactory and disappointing so indian people were not happy with this uh, reforms of montagu chemsford and they found that it is not enough if this is inadequate this is not satisfactory at all and this is very very disappointing also these were the circumstances in which gandhi launched the non violent non cooperation movement in august 1920 he made common cause with the muslim by supporting the khilafat movement so now he talked with muslim people that uh, we will support your khilafat movement you you support our uh, this non cooperation movement in this way hindu muslim came together and this revolution and this movement was very very large and wide spread people were called upon to boycott law court and legislature to give up uh, titles like a sir uh, honorary positions and nominated seats in local bodies so this was appeal to people and to withdraw children from government schools and aided schools and to picket shops selling liquor and imported cloth so they should avoid that liquor shop they should avoid imported cloth they should use khadi and home spun cloth a swaraj fund was created also and the people were asked to contribute to this fund so that they can uh, go in this movement uh, further now great stress was laid on the promotion of swadeshi through charkha now gandhi ji promoted charkha he uh, he also did uh, that is spinning every day for uh, an hour and uh, the need for national education institution was also emphasized the response to the call of non cooperation was unprecedented so this movement was very very successful and people uh, embraced this uh, movement with open hands in their hundreds and thousands of people belonging to different section of society quoted arrest and uh, and they included women who move out of the their age old seclusion to become non violent soldiers in the struggle for freedom so in this struggle even women were also involved the government was taken by surprise it is was surprise for british government its jail were overflowing and it did not quite know how to deal with the uninterrupted uh, row of satyagrahis it was uh, only towards the end of 1921 that popular enthusiasm began to wane now uh, in 20, 1921 it started failing that um, that movement started waning and diminishing also there were isolated cases of violence so there were many many cases and isolated cases of violence uh, by people in february 1922 what happens gandhi ji withdrew the movement this uh, non cooperation movement and he did uh, so after an angry mob had set on fire a police station at chaura chori in gorakhpur district Uh, gorakhpur district causing 22 policemen to be burnt alive now you know that uh, gandhi ji never supported violence measures so the withdrawal sudden as it was came as a surprise to some prominent congress leaders 
so this withdrawal is even surprise for congress leaders they even criticized gandhi for letting the people down but gandhi was convinced that country was not prepared for a non violent struggle he was deeply anxious now and felt that the moment had been a himalayan blunder on his part so he thought that he by launching this non cooperation movement he has done a great blunder he has done a great mistake and uh, immediately after the withdrawal of non cooperation movement uh, though the prospects seemed depressing gandhi was jailed differences cropped up within the congress on the question of fighting elections for the legislature under the montego chemsport scheme one group the swarajist fought the elections on the plea of carrying on non cooperation within the council with a view of raking them from inside hindu muslim unity came under serious strain as communal riots broke out in number of places so the unity now disintegrated and there was rampant communal riots in many many places there was again a spurt of political activity when towards the end of 1927 the british government announced the appointment of simon commission with no indian members to review the constitutional situation in india most of the indian parties decided to boycott the commission that simon commission because they thought uh, it's uh, it is not representing any indian people uh, although it has uh, come to make uh, constitutional reforms in india what type of reform is this at the same time attempts were made to patch up hindu muslim differences and evoke a scheme that would be acceptable to both the communities the ultimate failure of these efforts at the all parties conferences in calcutta 1928 dealt a serious blow to the causes of hindu muslim unity so from the leaders time to time there were many many efforts were made to combine hindu muslim and to um, to do something in the path of their unity but they failed and uh, now meanwhile radical forces were gaining around ga- gaining ground within the congress now that revolutionaries were again uh, getting some hold on congress they were pressing for the acceptance of uh, complete independence poorn swaraj is the creed of the congress they wanted that congress should have the motto of poorn swaraj they wanted full independence they succeeded when the congress met in lahore uh, under the presidentship of jawaharlal nehru in 1929 so this resolution was formed as a sequel to the poorn swaraj resolution 26 january was observed all over the country as a day of independence so uh, from this time around uh, 26 january was uh, observed as a uh, first day of independence the day of independence and the stage was set for civil disobedience movement now it, it was the time for civil disobedience movement which was organized by mahatma gandhi it began in, with gandhi's dandi march the march ended with the mahatma violating the government's salt monopoly by ceremonially manufacturing salt so in this march mahatma gandhi broke the salt law i have made video on this you must watch that i will give the links this was the signal for lakhs lakhs of men and women throughout the country to make token salt withhold payment of taxes boycott foreign goods and organize mass strikes so this was an appeal made by gandhi ji to do the government was in quandary now government was in very very trouble they government was confused on one hand it had uh, to deal with the revolutionary violence of determined youth so like bhagat singh and chandrashekhar azad so uh, it is a picture of bhagat singh our ideal chandrashekhar azad on the other hand uh, were the equal determined and the infinitely more numerous gandhian satyagrahis 
and uh, now britishers have to deal with both gandhi and satyagraha is also and revolutionaries also so he was in very very much uh, dilemma and confusion and uh, total um, uh, problematic condition was there it decided to let loose a reign of terror so now they opted for terror but its authority was eroded eventually the viceroy irvin was forced to negotiate with gandhi and a part of gandhi irvin pact 1931 civil disobedience was suspended and gandhi left for london to take part in the round table conference which was to discuss the constitutional future of india now gandhi ji headed for london to discuss this matter and he suspended this movement called a civil disobedience movement he came back from the conference to be jailed again he was jailed convinced that the british were bent upon exploiting sectional differences within the indian society in order to continue their hold over india so now they now he also convinced that nothing could be done there nothing can be come out of that uh, that british rule in india at last the government of india act 1931 was passed and the congress fought the election and formed ministries in six provinces in 1937 the ministries resigned when at a time of outbreak of second world war uh, during 1939 to 45 that uh, second world war was uh, done and the british made india a party to the war without consulting indian opinion subhash chandra bose so that uh, congress could not uh, had to resign because uh, they found that uh, britishers have included india without consulting them now subhash chandra bose was insistent that india should use britain's crisis to work for her independence so now subhash chandra was a great leader and he thought that this is a great uh, occasion when uh, we find that uh, britishers in problem they are fighting to the three allies and so we can uh, utilize this time for independence of our country and uh, he could not carry with uh, his lem leaders like uh, gandhi ji like gandhi and nehru but he could not convince these leaders like gandhi and nehru so he had to part away so later during the war he secretly got out of the country and led the azad hind fauj indian national army so he found that azad hind fauj which has which hastened the advent of independence and uh, this country its contribution is great in uh, path of our freedom this is azad hind fauj the dominant congress leadership was prepared to help the british if they uh, agreed to hand over the substance of power so now congress leaders were very very dominant that uh, they wanted that they must uh, get power negotiations in this connections finally broke down consequently in august 1942 gandhi issued stirring call of do or die so now gandhi ji issued the cry from for people uh, either you should do or die and uh, launched the quit india movement the government retaliated swiftly and arrested the top congress leadership and uh, that was no avail that was of no use the quit india movement spread caused spontaneously like wild fire it was a, like a fire it was a, like a chain reaction the uh, the people evidently had taken it uh, upon themselves to fight till the last now people were determined to fight britishers on their own freedom was now only a matter of time uh, the british could uh, see the fertility of staying on for a little longer besides widespread civilian resistance discontent was spreading within the armed forces besides in armed forces uh, indians were working and so they were not uh, happy that they are serving britishers so there was lot of discontent from their side also uh, the the example of ina 
आजाद हिंद फौज अपार्ट देयर वॉज अपराइजिंग ऑफ इंडियन नेवल रेटिंग इन बॉम्बे सो देर वॉज अनदर अपराइजिंग इन दैट नेवल नेवल आर्मी एंड ऑन फिफ्टीन अगस्त नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन इंडिया बिकेम फ्री बट फ्रीडम वॉज अकम्पनीड बाई पार्टीशन वी हैव बीन एबो वी हैव सीन एबो हाउ एफर्ट्स टू डिवाइज कॉम्प्रोमाइज एक्सेबल टू बोथ एक्सेप्टेबल टू बोथ मुस्लिम एंड हिंदूज हैड फेल्ड एट आल पार्टीज कॉन्फ्रेंस इन कैलकटा इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एट आफ्टर दिस ऑल दो दी कांग्रेस कंटिन्यू टू हैव मुस्लिम अमॉन्ग्स इट्स लीडर्स एज वेल एज इट्स रैंक एंड फाइल the muslim uh, league drifted progressively away from congress so now muslim totally drifted away from congress and they and uh, it it also managed to strengthen its claims to represent the muslim as a community and they started claiming that uh, muslim league, muslim league uh, represent uh, muslims of india and not that uh, few leaders who are working in congress at its lahore session in 1940 under jinnah's presidentship the league adopted its historical pakistan resolution so now that pakistan resolution was done during the following 7 years with help from the british it worked resolutely to realize its objectives success came to its in 1947 so now they were uh, taking help of britishers and they wanted to form new country and they were successful during 1947 so this was the chapter and uh, thank you so much for patiently uh, listening to me thank you so much please like share and subscribe